Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I install Dask to use in a Jupyter interactive environment. We're gonna install Dask and a couple other libraries to help make everything just a lot more smooth. So I have started a, a clean Conda environment ever left. I use, I use Mamba usually, there's a Conda alternative, uh, but I'll do most of this in pip. But mostly I'm just showing you this to show you that I have a very clean environment, there's nothing here. And I'm gonna pip install. So if I was using Conda, I would say Conda install Dask. I also want JupyterLab. And I'm also gonna add the Dask lab extension. This is a Jupyter lab extension that integrates Dask really well. I could do that. I could also use pip. Uh, if I'm gonna use pip, it's important that I use Dask complete. Uh, in pip, there's a few other packages that we, we don't install by default. This is all explained in the Dask installation. So again, conda, you want to do conda install Dask, or pip, uh, pip install Dask complete. So let's do that. Oops. This is what happens in some shells. Using brackets doesn't work, so I've got to put quotes around this. Great. That should work out just fine. So this is going to download a bunch of things. We're downloading, we're downloading, we're downloading. We now get to thank all the package managers for managing all the packages for us and all the dependencies. Um, and everyone who builds all the lovely Python ecosystem. Um, there's no way this would work without a thousand people working every day. So thank you all. Okay, so that should hopefully be done in a second or two. I get to like do a little dance. Great, we're done, awesome, okay. I'm now going to run JupyterLab. I prefer JupyterLab. Uh, JupyterLab is like the next generation of the Jupyter Notebook. It also has space for things like Dask integrations. So you notice this logo right here. That's the logo for the Dask lab extension, which we installed. Super cool. Okay. So let's grab a new notebook and I'll do from Dask distributed, import to client. I'll do local cluster uh, and client. And we'll create a new cluster. So Dask can runs on clusters of thousands of machines, or you can just run it on a single machine. And then client equals cluster.getClient. And it should take a couple seconds for the first time it's running. It's important lots of things. And we're right, we're done. Um, so I can now run, you know, some Dask job. Let's import Dask. Let's make a little data frame as Dask data sets. Time series. There's like a simple function that generates some random data. Um, so I can go do things now. Okay, so the reason I like JupyterLab, the reason I like this Dask Lab extension is because I can I can connect against some, some dashboard plots. So you're probably familiar with that. The cluster has a dashboard. And I can go and navigate to and go and see what's what's going on in my cluster. But I actually like these plots to be integrated directly inside of my JupyterLab experience. So I'm gonna do that by pressing this button here. Once I've got a client active, this button is gonna search my notebook for a client and it's gonna populate it with that same address. Now I can get some of those same charts that I like. I like the task stream chart. I like the progress bar. Let's get those two. I'm gonna move these around to give me a nice configuration that I like. I also like looking at memory per worker. That's often a useful, a useful chart to have. Cool. This is the way that I, that I like my, my workloads. And now when I do work, you know, df dot, you know, x dot sum, for example, I get to see those charts directly inside my JupyterLab environment. So really nice. Anyway, a few things that we learned again here. We learned to install Dask with Conda using content install Dask or with pip, with pip install Dask complete. We also learned about the Dask lab extension package, which gives this lovely um, sort of integrated experience with Dask charts inside of JupyterLab. And again, that works by pressing this Dask logo button and then selecting this magnifying glass when you're in a notebook that has a Dask cluster uh, working. If I were to shut down uh, my notebook, so I'll restart the kernel, my cluster is going to go away. What we'll find is that these charts will go away and the dashboard is no longer connected. If I press this button now, nothing happens. If 
I create a new cluster, it comes back. So that's it. Uh, again, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, there's a lot of cool projects you can use with Dask. I recommend looking at the Dask docs. There's hundreds of libraries you might want to install based on the, the software that you have today. I'll point finally at pypi.org and search for Dask. And there are, you know, 740 Dask projects out there with different software that you might be playing with already. So thanks again for your time. Hopefully this is helpful.